Now, the last one is a big one. Uh, and I probably will um, eventually put together a whole series on the Gilbreth principle because there's just so much to talk about here. So if you're familiar with the Gilbreth principle, um, you'll realize there's a lot that you can do with a Cy Stebbins arrangement. But a consequence of a Gilbreth performance is the Cy Stebbins ordering will be destroyed. Okay? Now that's not all bad if you, if you are able to um, come up with a very surprising and engaging routine for the spectator. So it may be worth destroying your Cy Stebbins arrangement for that purpose. Um, what we could do is just think about this for a moment and you'll, you'll be able to kind of see why I would come up with these different numbers to work with. Uh, remember, so, so um, focus on the colors, the colors alternate, red, black, red, black throughout. Okay, that's nice. So if you have an even number of consecutive cards, it's going to be, quote, cyclic. It will have that repeating of red, black throughout, okay? Um, the same thing for groups of four. So if I take four cards, so for example, if I took just eight cards, it will have that arrangement. In fact, maybe we'll just do that. So why don't we go ahead, we'll um, focus on the suits first, and then maybe we'll focus on values and then we'll focus on the alternating color of the cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just deal out eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this will be for our suits. We're going to focus on the fact that the suits cycle through. And so here it'll the suits will cycle through twice, right? Because there's just eight cards. Um, if we want to do values, the values cycle every 13. So we would need 26 here. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so this bigger one, it consists of a cycling of all 13 twice, okay, uh, because we have 26 cards here and 13 divides into 26 twice. And then the remaining cards will have an alternating red-black structure that we could take advantage of. So there's 18 cards here. Now it's not so important how many cards are here, as long as you have an even number. You need an even number to preserve that alternating nature of the colors of those cards. Okay, so this one here alternates in color. This one here alternates in suits. This one here alternates in values. Okay, well, what is a Gilbreth performance? So why don't we go ahead and we'll start with this one here. Okay, so what a Gilbreth shuffle is it's a riffle shuffle, so I'll show you what a riffle shuffle is in a second, or if you don't know already. Um, it's a riffle shuffle in which you have reverse counted a certain number of cards from the top. In fact, why don't we go ahead with another deck here and just show you, quote, what is a, a classic riffle shuffle. So a riffle shuffle is where you just have a deck and you can break it off anywhere. Most people try to do about halfway and then you ha have the cards fall how, how they may, left, right, left, right, okay? So this is called a riffle shuffle, okay? Now, for smaller packet sizes, there are equivalent ways of achieving the same sort of mixing of the cards that I'll show you. Uh, because to, to do this kind of shuffle for really small packets like this one of eight, is hard to do and you can try and you'll realize it's a bit tricky. So I'll show you an equivalent way that's actually aesthetically more attractive as a shuffle. Okay, so how this works, now these are the cards that alternate in color, right? Red, black throughout. Okay, 
So this is what we call a cyclic construction or cyclic packet. So the Gilbreth principle says the following. If you reverse count, this is reversing the order of the cards, right? Because the very top card is now at the bottom of that packet. We're reversing them. Reverse count any number of cards, and then you, quote, riffle shuffle these together. Some very important characteristics survive that process, okay? So what we may do here, since they're very small groups of cards, we're going to do something that's equivalent to a riffle shuffle. It's called a rosette shuffle. So this is where you just kind of spin the cards and then just bring them together and have them kind of interlace however they, you know, they will. Okay, it really is random. So this is equivalent to doing a riffle shuffle like the one I showed you just a moment ago. Well, at this point, the Gilbreth principle is in force. And what is the Gilbreth principle? Well, the Gilbreth principle says that because we had this alternating uh, black-red, black-red structure, what will happen is pairs of cards from the top will consist of one of each color. Now, we won't know the order of the cards necessarily. Okay, so for example, see here's one pair. There's the second pair. Well, notice that we had red, black, red, black, and now it's black, red. But what you are guaranteed is that each pair of cards will consist of one of each color. Well, if we know that this happens, there's many, many things that you can do that are very surprising using that outcome as a, the engine driving your effect. Okay? Um, so one would be just you know, showing the spectator that despite the fact that you just, they saw those cards coming together in that rosette shuffle in just kind of a messy way, how could they have come together so perfectly so that every pair has one of each color? Okay, so that's really quite inexplicable in and of itself. Uh, we could have turned it into a little bit of a betting routine where, kind of go back in time, so here we've Gilbert shuffled it, and you could have the spectator decide, okay, um, the pair will be a winning pair for them if these two are of the same color. It's a winning pair for you if they're opposite color. Well, it ends up that that's a fair, quote, fair game to play because there's just as many ways for these two cards to be of the same color as there are ways for them to be different. So it truly is a fair game. So you can say, okay, so you win if they're the same color and I win if they're different colors. So you push off two and go, oh, okay, that's a win for me, right? Okay, now what about, oh, I won these as well. Surely you're going to get a, a pair of the same color here, right? Nope, <laughs> you lost that one. Oh, you've lost that one. You've got to be the most unlucky person ever. Are you going to win any? No way. How in the world did you rosette shuffle those in just the right way where the outcome of this little game guaranteed that I would win and that you would get no matches whatsoever? Well, the reason that you got no matches of color in the pairs is because of the Gilbreth principle, okay? Um, because the Gilbreth principle says that in pairs for this packet, they have to be of opposite color, okay? So we're not going to go too deeply into why the Gilbreth principle works, because that could be a whole series, actually, to be able to pull that off. Okay, let's go ahead and apply the Gilbreth principle to this little packet. Now, secretly, you know this. You know that this is a cyclic construction of the four suits repeating twice. So you have diamonds, spades, hearts, clubs. Diamonds, spades, hearts, clubs. So this is a cyclic packet. So the Gilbreth principle applies. So now we perform a Gilbreth shuffle. What is that? This is where you reverse count any number of cards, and it truly can be any number. Maybe we'll just do three instead of half of them. Okay, and then you 
riffle shuffle these together. That's a bit tricky to do with so few. So just do this little rosette shuffle instead. And I need to really emphasize I'm not in any way controlling how those two little packets interlace. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I, I suppose a person maybe with a lot of practice could achieve that, but that would be hard to do. And um, it's not happening. You could even have the spectator do that bringing together, right? But what does the Gilbert principle say? Well, the cycle length here is four. Cycle length means how long is the pattern before it repeats again? Well, for the red, black, for the black, red, black, red, black, red, the pattern was two elements, a black card and then a red card, a black card and then a red card. So that pair of colors repeated throughout. So we would say that this original packet, the cycle length is two because the cards repeat and color every two cards, okay? Now, what happened in this one here, because of the suits repeating, the cycle length is four. It's because there's four suits. Okay, so what, what does that mean for the Gilbreth principle? That means after we've performed our Gilbreth shuffle, which is what we just did, if you push off the top four cards, these four cards are guaranteed to have one of each suit. We won't know the order of the suits, uh, but we do know by the Gilbreth principle that there must be exactly one of each suit. Okay, and let's just check that. And it, yes, indeed, there's one of each suit. Okay, I'll push it up here and then kind of show you that we get a different order. And then the Gilbert principle continues to say, okay, this little packet of four cards will consist of one of each suit as well. Okay. And then just look, just look. Um, the ordering of the suits is different, right? There's clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Boy, that's the original order. Here now it's diamonds, spades, hearts, clubs. Okay, so it's a different ordering of the suits but what we are guaranteed is that each group of four from the top will have exactly one of each of those four suits, okay? So that's the Gilbreth principle applied to this little packet of eight cards where it started out with a repeating pattern for the suits, okay? And then remember for this last one, this last packet has a repeating pattern of the card values. So the card values repeat um, after 13 positions, okay? Well, if we perform a Gilbert shuffle on this, we just deal out a certain number of cards. It actually doesn't matter how many. The spectator can kind of tell you when to stop dealing, okay? Uh, we could actually do a rosette shuffle for this one as well. It's going to be a little bit a bigger one here. This is equivalent to a, a riffle shuffle, okay? And just look at how those cards are kind of just randomly interlacing there. And they really are, okay? Well, what does the Gilbreth principle guarantee us? That if I take the top 13 cards, there will be a card of each of the 13 different values. So none of the card values will repeat in that top 13. So let's just count them up. Let's get 13 of them first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so here's the first group of 13 cards. Okay, and we'll just kind of take a look at those. And we're left with 13 cards because if you remember, we dealt off 26 because we wanted this, repeat, this, this original repeating pattern of the values to occur twice, okay? So we have 26 cards. The Gilbreth principle says that this little packet of 13 cards will only have exactly one of each card value, okay? And so we can check that. So we have ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. And that's all of them. Um, same thing here. 
each chord value appears exactly once. So we have uh, ace, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Okay? And that's guaranteed to happen in this situation here. If you have those cards repeating in value twice in blocks of 13 cards, and then you perform a Gilbreth shuffle, which just means you reverse count some of the cards and then, quote, riffle shuffle them together, you're going to get an outcome like this. Well, because of the predictability of the ending structure for these different packets, you can come up with many different card effects based on this most remarkable principle. So it's called the Gilbreth principle. Okay, so it's because of the Cy Stebbins structured organization that you can actually take advantage of the fact that the cards originally alternated in color, that they alternated in suits, and then they alternated in values. Okay, so there's a lot that you could extract from this one deck. But the point that I made down here, of course, is after we've done a Gilbreth shuffle, we've destroyed the Cy Stebbins organization. And all that means is you just have to rebuild the deck in the way that I showed you at the beginning of this video. That's all that means. But if the purpose is to share a fun card effect with a family or friends, then you know that's a price that you'll probably w be willing to pay. Have to rebuild this deck again for later use. Anyway, that's uh, five of many, many applications of the Cy Stebbins ordering of a deck of cards, and that should uh, keep somebody busy for a while, and I'm mastering some of these various skills. But once you have them, they really are astonishing to any spectator who's not aware of the Thy Stebbins deck structure. Okay, well very good. So, um, so play with that, and you can look up online, I'm sure, uh, many additional applications and routines that use this most remarkable organization of a deck. And um, these are five of the uh, most popular ones. Uh, the one here is original. That's one put together for the video today. That's where we have the four packets. So anyway, have fun with that. At the heart of all of this is mathematics, once again. And the mathematics, if you look at the level of mathematics here is, is not really complicated math. It's fairly, fairly simple math. And so for that reason, I've put it under the Simple Math Card Magic playlist. So I hope you enjoyed that and take a look at some of the other videos in my Simple Math Card Magic playlist. And also take a look at the playlists that fall under the Extreme Math Card Magic because those are a lot of fun to watch and actually perform because I give you write-ups for those as to, okay, step one, step two, step three. I show you exactly how to do them. The only thing that may be a challenge, unless you have a bit of mathematics under your belt, will be understanding why they work. But there are plenty of card effects out there that people are happily using where they haven't a clue why they work. They just call them self-working card magic. So I, th I think you would enjoy any of the card effects on my channel that I've called Hidden Structures.